and we're live. Okay, hello everyone. Are you gonna ask me questions? They will probably fire me. Can you fix my hair? Can I say like curses? Kurwa, nie wiem, no. Bierzemy brudy. Oh my god. I don't know how people are gonna react. Next question. Teraz się zaczęłam denerwować. Oh, my first memory of red. Hmm. The first memory... Hmm. <laughs> when we were saying we want to make a big RPG and, you know, even serious of it, everybody was sort of, you know, smiling politely and being nice. So we always dreamt to create our own games. It started to happen. We started developing uh, The Witcher in, in the city of Łódź. Red comes from the red bricks of Łódź, because uh, Łódź was the Manchester of, of Poland. I've created the first, very first logo with the panorama of, uh, of Łódź. Time passed, we've changed the logo, but red stays. We started working on the game. Initially, four people, including, uh, including Adam Badowski. The team from, from Warsaw asked us are you gonna move to, to Warsaw? We moved the studio to Warsaw, started growing, and that was really the very beginning of The Witcher 1. We, we talked to Bioware, we licensed the Neverwinter Nights engine from them. After nine months with the Neverwinter Nights engine, we had the first prototype. I remember myself from those times that I was super, super proud of what I'm doing in my life. In my first memory, it would be when I came here for the first time. I found myself in a game or a fairy tale. It was like a big eye-opener that, yeah, this is this is real, this place is incredible. I got introduced uh, by a HR partner called Kasia. Oh, I wasn't that familiar with Polish culture. And then I met uh, my, uh, my interviewer for the day, Kasia. I was surprised at how many people had the same name. 15 people, six of them who are named Kasia. Uh, you know, you can say Marcin, Kasia, Michal. And then there'll be like five people who turn around. And I honestly actually thought that the studio was playing a prank on me at first. So that was also like surprising for me. The first thing was, is it always this cold here? Someone called me on my phone and it was Adam Badowski. <laughs> It's the first time someone called me and it's like basically say, Charles, we need you, please come. And well, okay, well, that was weird, but why not? My best moment? It's hard to pick one. Uh, best moment in red. Uh, honestly, just picking one moment will be tricky. I, I have it very often, actually. Release of The Witcher was the probably the most fun experience for me here and like the like, joyful time. That was just a wonderful era and, and everyone on the Quest team, we were all friends and we all hung out together. Everybody was happy, like laughing, you know, shouting and like it was like a party. It was really just, that was a fantastic time and really good for creativity as well. Everybody seems to be part of the family. There was no like different team or different thing, it was just like one big family going, you know, we did that together, guys. Similarly amazing moment was actually, but, but on a very different level, when we actually shipped The Witcher 1. We just had like an event in Empik on Marszałkowska. A lot of people came, you know, people were taking autographs from the team. For, for me, I remember it was like, wow, it actually happened kind of moment. Uh, because like literally it was happening for so long, like there were so many doubts, especially in the part of the team, which was more on on business and so on, uh, uh, and not in the dev itself, but I'm sure dev had tons of uh, doubts themselves. It was like this, a moment of relief and, and joy. I think it was the release of Gwent. Yeah, that, that was amazing because this was, this was my first big project. Having this privilege of working on the game, which I really, really like, uh, it's, it's something out of this world. Um, the toughest moment. Oh my. Wow, there was, there, was, there was some tough moments, obviously. I'm really inclined to say next question. Oh, wow. There were many. I guess everyone says Cyberpunk so far. Cyberpunk. The Cyberpunk release. Release of the game. Cyberpunk's release, the CP launch. Cyberpunk 2077. There was a lot of hard work, a lot of stress. Cyberpunk was a tough lesson. Uh, it was difficult. I was uh, personally destroyed. It was probably the worst December of my life, personally. Everybody was really excited. We 
had huge expectations. Uh, we all were waiting and expecting the success. Things starting to look good, 90 plus is very believable. At first it seemed that okay, we made it, but then it just... The entire internet talked about how awful our game was. I think it was really hard for the team because we did work quite hard to make it the best game and the best product that we can deliver. And unfortunately, you know, it didn't pan out. It's one of the things that makes us special is that we really get to make the game perfect. And I do have to say it did feel very bad and I do think I speak for many developers that that wasn't possible. As a creator, as an artist, if you invest so much of yourself into the art you are creating, you are counting on having the, you know, interest of this emotion going back to you, right? If you poured so much like blood, sweat and tears, it is like absolutely devastating. Very tough time for me, like on all levels. It had impact on me personally and, and, and my health and all that stuff, so yeah. I... I was very dark place after we launched it because it just went against how I saw the studio and myself in it. I feel like we beat ourselves up too much and too long over its actual release. Like, was it perfect? No, but it also wasn't a failure. It wasn't a piece of crap. But generally, I believe that this game is top, unique experience you can encounter in the whole game fucking, you know, history. It is a beautiful city, it is a beautiful game, there is beautiful moments. It's a game that is going to be playable a decade, two decades from now, and people will be replaying it or will be starting playing it because someone will tell them that if you want to experience something which is really unique, uh, you have to play this game because that will expand your perspective on things. I really hope that we reach a point where we can actually just look back on Cyberpunk with more pride than we currently do. At least that's the feeling I have. Funny moments. Ooh. Ah, shit. The most funny moments. There was so many of them. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. You may have to delete it, but I will tell you. What the fuck moments. <sighs> this whole fucking studio is what the fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was on. Yeah, it was actually the. I think it was the first picnic we, we had. It was one of not the first time I had a vodka encounter uh, in Poland, but probably one of the first time that I had an encounter with some proper Polish drinker. Yeah, I was a bit tipsy and everything, and I a little bit tired. And it was a beautiful night, so I went to the just at the border of the forest, and I was looking at the sky and it was, you know, it was stars. It was beautiful, so I decided to yeah, just sit down a little bit and then just you know. Look at the sky, relaxing. Unfortunately, I just you know, decided to sleep a little bit. Then I just woke up, like it was probably four in the morning, like what the hell, what is going on? I, I got up extremely fast and, you know, okay, I, don't lose your, you know, don't miss the bus. Um, so I started to go and then I realized halfway through that mm, I don't have my glass and I'm absolutely blind. So I barely managed to get to my, my room full of dirt because I you know, was sleeping and rolling on myself. I was really happy. But then it was the, the guy that was in my room and he said, uh, you know, where were you? And I just explained the story and he said, okay. And he, he, he took a bunch of people and they went to the forest and they just literally uh, checked everywhere and they came back with the glass, with the victory. And now it's a, it's a fun story to tell. A friend from marketing told me uh, to order 10,000 uh, pencils. And I asked uh, on the corridor, do you really want 10,000 pencils? So I've ordered 10,000 pencils. Then she told me that she meant 1,000. But yeah, we, we had many pencils uh, in the office. <sighs> what the fuck moment. Usually the what the fuck moments are caused by, caused by me and the people are the ones who say what the fuck. I still remember Adam Badowski wearing a long black coat, standing outside in the winter, smoking this long red uh, Marlboro, which, which was like super hardcore. Finished one, I was like looking at him. Then he pulled out another long one and smoked it like in, the, in, in a couple of seconds. Like, wow, that's super hardcore. So for me to see him change from from that to actually like like uh, being a believer in a healthy lifestyle and so on, which is I think great for him, but but that was a lot of fun for me. There's definitely something about 
Gwent community and scooters, which not really get along well. One of our casters visited us and he had uh, a few drinks and then at like 5 a.m. in the morning tried to drive those e-scooters. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite is when, when we drive a vehicle, the uh, wheels were spread it and they moved like a, some creature. And where we implemented chickens, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Why we've got chickens instead of vehicles or NPCs, right? One of the first ECTS shows, me and Michał Kiczynski, the co-founder, we are I don't know, in our 20s, we look like kids, so we were wearing suits and I even bought glasses to look more serious and professional. And so we have the meeting with Interplay, so really our role models. That, that's our first show, so it's our first face-to-face -face meeting and we approach the receptionist, yeah, two seriously looking guys, longer hair, combed. The receptionist is like, we were asked for, for a lady. Her name was from my, uh, what I recall, Marta Malachny. And then a lady comes out, never seen her. Seen her. Uh, no LinkedIn's, you know, you cannot check anyone, no Facebook, nothing. And then she's asking the receptionist, so, uh, uh, where, where, where are they? So the parade guys, where is this over there? She's looking at us and it's like, oh boy, just kids. And we're like, holy oh, fuck. The thing I'm most proud of is this is hard one. Proud? Um, mm -hmm. mm. I think I'm proud of... Dobra, no? Let's go. Um, I'm actually very proud of my, my team. So I'm very proud to be able to support them uh, as much as they are supporting me. We trusted each other, we work with each other, we, we, we grew with each other, yeah? And the result of this is, you know, visible in, in the games, in the in the art of them, in the stories, in the worlds, in the characters. Uh, to me, this, this specific journey, this growth that we, we all did and we're all doing is something that uh, I'm, I'm super proud of. I'm not interested in being second or third. I'm interested in having the best narrative department in the world. And I really feel we can do it. Like we have amazing experts and a really, really strong group of specialists in that and juniors that we are hiring nowadays and interns, I wouldn't be probably hired. We are hiring people that are much better than we were at the time. And we are trying to hire up, always just hire better people than we were. So I'm the most proud of the, the team that we have built. Uh, so like, I think in 2018, we went to GDC and that was first GDC for me. And we saw lots of really amazing speeches and people from all over the world. It was super inspiring for me to see that it's not so far away in the end, because that, that's how you think about yourself sometimes. At least I thought about me that I'm, you know, I'm just a small developer from Poland, you know, like Hollywood or like games from US are so far away. And those people have, have to be, you know, from different planet. And the, when, then you get to on, on such events and you can see that those are just, you know, normal people, regular people, just like passionate about what they are doing. And uh, when we were there, I had this idea that, okay, we, we work on Cyberpunk now and like after we release it, I would like to come to GDC and have my own speech. And actually I did it recently with Paweł Hatsky, we did a speech on cinematic design in Cyberpunk and I'm super proud of it because it's like, a, no, like a circle for me, like I, uh, like we set up this goal, okay, let's come back and tell them how we approach it, how we solve problems, and we did it, and that's, that's an achievement for me, and I'm, I'm super proud of it. Definitely our products and the recognition of our products all over the world, that's, that's incredible. We've achieved it starting from, uh, from scratch, actually, here in Warsaw, and our games are all over the continents. I'm most proud of our games, I mean, definitely. I mean, this is this is very, very clear. Making games, it's, it's pure art. It's creating something meaningful that speaks to the heart of, of gamers, so actually more and more people around the world. Uh, because when I started, you know, gaming was more of like a nerdy thing, and right now almost everybody's playing games. And, and it speaks to the hearts of people, so this is, this is, this is fucking incredible, you know? You have nothing. You, you, you paint, you draw, you compose, you put it all together, you make it work, and then people, people remember these moments and they live with them and they, 
they they create their own stories and uh, yeah that's that's what I'm most proud of. One word. That's a heavy restriction. Huh. <laughs> If I could describe Riot in one word, it would be chaos. Chaos is a blessing and a curse. Structure stifles creativity, right? Sometimes we need to creatively break rules. Out of the chaos, new inventions create new order. When it comes to combination with the creativity, it's pure energy. Oh man, 20 words at least. It is a studio of quality. It's a studio of fire. Unique. Always hungry. Ambitious. Unyielding. I think passion. I would say dreamers. Intensively magic. Bravery for me is like that word. Hero. There's this fall. Take all the blows and fail if needed. And then you, you know, start walking and learn walking again. Even though it's sometimes complicated. And grow from this and, and then, you know, become this, this legend in a way. Explain this. Challenger champion defeating. The people. This is the biggest asset the company has. I don't feel like most people are here for just a paycheck. People create this company with their passion. At the core, there's heart. I love coming here because I love meeting those people. I feel like I'm in the right place. It feels really like I'm at home. A company that tries to impress every time. Your inventors, there is a lot of knowledge here. It's a grown-up company. It's a grown-up company. I'm proud, you know, I'm happy. I think it's super sounds super silly and simple, but ultimately that's us, all of us, who make it happen. When I think about it, I have a huge smile in my head and on my face as well.